Hi everyone, it's Lucy and today we're going to be doing a full face of Korean makeup. I've been using K-Beauty for I want to say almost 10 years now, um, definitely since my early teens. I've been into a bunch of brands and some of you may or may not know that I am a low-key K-pop fan. I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm a stan, but like it's definitely getting there. <laughs> so what I wanted to do today was a K-Beauty K-pop inspired makeup look. I'm going to a holiday party tonight so I can do something a little bit more glitzy and glam than I could on say my average work day. And I'm going to do it all using Korean makeup products. Now I've just showered, I've done some skincare. To prep my skin, I use the Sun and Park Beauty Water. First few times I used it, I just didn't really get it. I didn't really understand the hype. This is actually a great multi-purpose product. I've primarily been using it as a toner, but I just find it really helpful as a cleansing water that isn't exactly a micellar water, like it doesn't leave any residue. It's much more like a water than a makeup remover. So if you do ever need to refresh your face for whatever reason, this has been amazing. I've also popped on some of the Dear Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. Now, some of you guys who've been watching me for a while may know that I tried the original Supple Preparation Toner and I really did not jive with it. I wouldn't say that I have overly sensitive skin, but the essential oils and fragrance in that one just really, something was telling me, perhaps my skin intuition was telling me that my skin did not like it but um, I did pick up this one and the great news is that I like it way more. In this one there is hyaluronic acid, beta-glucan, centella asiatica um, so it's really like just a soothing hydrating mix. It's, it's kind of like a nice little all-in-one so I've been really enjoying that. And now I need to prep my face. I did just use a um, sheet mask which it was the my beauty diary mask which is taiwanese so we're gonna pretend i didn't do that and now i'm applying the sun and park beauty filter cream glow now i actually bought this a while back in korea but this is a like priming moisturizer it has like a slight pearlescent sheen it reminds me a lot of strobe cream from mac it's very similar i would say it's slightly thicker and creamier texture and it's not as spreadable as strobe cream strobe cream is more of a lotion this is more of a cream because it does have that cosmetic effect of the kind of like toning and illuminating properties i probably wouldn't use it any other time than before makeup but i will say without sounding totally conceited that i do think it gives my skin a really pretty glow and luminescence so now the next part of my look I'm very excited about because I'm going to be using Korean colored contact lenses. And the ones I'm using today are going to be from Harper Kristen. And they are actually a new contact lens brand that are under the PPB Studios umbrella, which is the same group that owns Chu and Something Sweet. So they had seen some of my videos about Chu and they asked me if I wanted to try some contact lenses. So they asked me to just pick a couple and they sent them to me. Just to be clear, this video is not sponsored by Harper Kristen. They're not paying me to say anything. And at this point, unless I write a note somewhere, I am not an affiliate of the brand. So any links left down in the description, I do not earn a commission off of. Now that we got that out of the way, let's try some contacts. So this is the box. Um, first of all, I just want to say how cute is the packaging. All the illustrations are really cute. Even the pharmaceutical style, like cartoony packaging, I just really dig it. It's very much my vibe. They've sent me a few options. So they sent me these ones, which are one month lenses. This one they actually recommended me to try because they thought it would look cool. It's really faint, but they're actually like a blue tinted lens, which would be really cool because obviously my eyes are not blue. <laughs> now, my preferred style of contacts are one day lenses. Because I don't need to wear contact lenses, I'm only really wearing them when I want to have like a fashionable eye color for a look rather than I need to see on the daily. So for those of you who do need to wear contacts daily and you would like to try colored lenses, I totally would recommend getting the one month lenses, especially because I'm assuming you know how to take care of colored contact lenses better than I will. I've already worn these ones actually. I'll insert a clip of what they look like, but they are very, very cool. They don't look too different from my actual regular eye color which is just brown but I do have a darker limbic ring for me they look actually quite natural but I kind of enjoyed that that I had the option to just sort of like slightly enhance my eye color without looking too crazy because oftentimes colored contacts can look super crazy so so that's why today I'm gonna try these ones these are the OMG Kristen so I feel like these will look really cool because they don't have that dark limbic ring I'm gonna go pop these in and I will come back and show you that is crazy how natural that looks. It's definitely different to my natural eye color, but I would say that my eyes still look really natural. They're really striking, but not in like an artificial way. Like they look super natural. Now let's get started on the makeup. So for foundation, I'm going to be taking this. This is the Misha Original Tension Pact in the shade 
13 and this is the perfect cover variety. I'm sure you guys have all tried a BB cushion before. It's actually just a mesh net over some foundation. So as you can see, it is super full coverage. They had a buy one, get one offer at a Misha in Seoul. And this was really inexpensive. I want to say it was like $15, which meant for the two of them, it was like $7.50 each. The color match for me is really nice. As you can see, that is my natural skin tone. And this is the Misha. I think it does look really natural on me. I do get a little bit of redness and that covers it really, really nicely. Definitely a very perfecting style foundation. Um, the only thing I will say that I don't love about it is it's a little bit on the thicker side. It definitely does feel like you're wearing makeup. It's just not quite an elegant formula compared to some others that are similar. I've tried some higher end cushions that give similar levels of coverage but feel a lot lighter on the skin. As you can see as I'm like popping it on, it's a slightly like satin to dewy finish. And this one I actually have found living in Australia does really, really well in humid climates. So in the hotter months, this one stays really well. I will say if you wear it all day, it does tend to cake up a little bit around my nose and my smile lines. It just looks distinguishably like foundation. It's not quite so seamless, which I don't mind the look of it. Now I'm just gonna take some concealer. I'm gonna use this. This is the Cover Perfection Tip Concealer from The Same. This is an amazing concealer and it's really inexpensive as well. It's super cheap. It's under $10. So I'm going to just take this concealer under my eyes and also just a little bit here in the center of my face because I just tend to get a little bit red there. That's just my reality. So I'm just going to do that and I just take a little bit there as well. I'm actually not going to blend this in yet. I want the product to get a little bit tacky. So when I do blend it out, it is of a higher coverage using the same amount of product, but you're just getting a little bit more mileage out of it. And while we're doing this, I'm going to do my brows. So we have two brow products from Etude House. If you've been into K-Beauty for a while, you probably would have come across Etude House in like the mid 2000s, maybe early 2010s. I feel like it was just like the K-Beauty brand mainly because they had a lot of celebrity endorsements and it was really affordable. And I haven't tried as much from the brand as I used to, but I was really, really into the brand at one point. So I'm going to use this, which is the Drawing Eyebrow. I haven't actually had this for too long. I ordered it just for this video, but it was really, really inexpensive. And I feel like it was super popular. Like it was among the best sellers on the site. So I was like, okay, this is in the shade number three. So it's more of a warm brown. It's really easy to use. Like very very similar to I would say like the hourglass brow pencil but this one is really inexpensive and I found the lasting power to be actually excellent I've been wearing it to work and when I come home so much more than usual like my brows look fully intact which is crazy so this is an amazing product so the brows are done I'm just going to blend in that concealer so as you can see it just adds a little bit of extra coverage to my makeup Alrighty, that is my base for now. I'm just going to let it set for a little bit just so when I'm powdering, I'm not over powdering because there are still a few areas which may dry down. So I don't want to over powder where I don't need to. I'm now going to go in with another Etude House brow product, which is the Etude House Color My Brows. And this is in, I believe, the red brown shade. As you may have seen, I have recently dyed my hair coppery orange red. It kind of depends on when I wash it. This is a brow cara. I've been having issues with my brows looking super mismatched um, from my hair color. So this is, it also adds like a little bit of thickness to my brows, which I kind of like. My brows are already thick, but this product also holds my brow really well. Once this product sets, my brow literally doesn't move. So it's been quite incredible. But yeah, as you can see, it just matches my hair color to my hair a little bit better. Brows are done. I always feel like I look a little bit crazy with just foundation and brows. Like it's just like, while this is the traditional k-beauty trend style brow of that like straight brow um i would say that if you are trying to do like a k-beauty inspired look to definitely keep your eyebrows looking really like fluffy and filled but i wouldn't necessarily say they have to be straight especially now i feel like in k-pop a lot of the idols are actually just like shaping their brow to fit their face rather than doing it to fit like this particular like innocent image. One person who immediately comes to mind is Hwasa from Mamamoo. She has really thin, precise brows and I feel like they suit her really, really well. Now let's move on to eyes. I've tried quite a few Korean style eyeshadow palettes and mm, <laughs> and don't cancel me, but I honestly, in my opinion, I don't think the pigmentation of them is necessarily always great, but I will say I think they have been improving drastically. Just very subtle um, compared to Western Star eyeshadows like your Anastasia or your Makeup Geeks that are just very strongly pigmented. Now I'm not saying low pigmentation is a bad thing, but I do prefer for things to be buildable and you know also just to show up. 
There has been an eyeshadow palette that I've been using that I love, and this is from Hamish. This is the Dayism palette. This is the rose one. You can't really comprehend how beautiful the shimmers are until you put them on the lid, but the good thing is that I will be putting them on the lid. So because it is a all Korean beauty products, I really want to do a like K-pop-ish kind of look. And one thing that I've seen that is really trendy in the last couple of years in terms of Korean beauty, K-pop trendy kind of looks is just glitter. Really beautiful, luminescent, and mm, it just brings me such joy. These peachy rosy colors are becoming really popular and since I'm wearing these like bluey gray contacts I feel like a peachy pink kind of vibe would be cute. I'm gonna go in with this. I'm just gonna take the light peachy color and just dust it all over the lid. These palettes are so great. There's only eight colors but all of them are really nice. What I like about these palettes is they create this really beautiful color story. It's like no matter what you mix with these palettes it looks really really cute. Now I'm just going to go in with the slightly darker shade and I'm just going to apply that in the crease and on the outer corner. In case you guys couldn't tell, I'm not a makeup artist. <laughs> I also don't have a lot of eyelid real estate. I tend to do more of my like looks with like skin and lips because I feel like that's a lot more visible on me. I'm just taking it a little bit underneath as well. I'm not like being particularly precise, but just whatever's left over on your brush. Just going under. Now, I do love this raspberry pinky color, but I don't want to go like too, too bubblegum pink because I find whenever I use that color, it just becomes very pink very quickly. Whereas at the moment, it's more of this like peachy, dusty color. So I'm going to go into this coppery color. This color is not quite as pigmented, and it's got a little bit of fallout. But I just want to make sure I'm building up some depth because we're going to put the goldy pink magical goodness that is that glitter in the inner corner and center of the lid. So I'm just building up a little bit more depth. Now I'm just taking a, another big fluffy brush that's slightly cleaner and just going over the outside of that. And now for the best part. We're actually going to go for this champagne-y color, which isn't as champagne-y on the lid like that. And we are just going to take it onto the lid. Oh, oh my god. Um, is that not stunning? And I've tried doing this with a brush but it just doesn't look as nice as it does with the finger. Even though this is the rose palette it's looking pretty like peachy right now. I know I'm jumping all around the place but I'm sorry that's just the style I do my makeup. This is a new one for me. This is the EG Lips Glow Powder Packed. I kind of thought that this might be a really nice alternative to my hourglass ambient lighting powder which I'm obsessed with and while it does definitely have a little bit of luminescence to it I would say for the most part it's just a mattifying powder and I'm just popping that where I need it because I feel like with this look, I want to keep it really dewy and like fresh. And I am going to add a really, really pretty highlighter, which I'm so excited to show you guys. So I'm going to leave my like cheek just as it is because I don't feel like it's overly shiny. It just looks nice and healthy. Now it's time for a little bit of face shaping. And my favorite contour product that I've been using is this Too Cool For School Art Class by Rodan Contour. It's this really beautiful blend of three colors. So a lighter, medium, and a dark. It's a really nice sort of ashy contour color. Because for me, I find it really hard to find a contour color that doesn't look too red or warm. I would say that contouring in the like traditional, like Western sense of things is not really like a big thing in K-beauty. Now, like I'm not the authority on K-beauty by any means, but I just personally don't see a lot of contouring products at least. Can we just admire it how nice this shade is? Because I feel like it just cuts my cheek so naturally without looking like too crazy. I'm just gonna pop some blush on and this is one of my favorite blushes. This is the 3CE Face Blush in the shade Mono Pink, which is just this really, really gorgeous peachy nude shade. I can never tell how much blush I should put on. Like sometimes I feel like I put on blush and I'm like, whoa, that's a lot. And then I walk outside and I look like just ghostly. I really wanna pick up some other colors in this range because they're just so like beautiful and natural. They're the prettiest like matte, blushes that just really offer soft like I want I don't want to say watercolor but very much like flushes of color as opposed to more opaque formulas they're just really subtle and you can really build them up like I've done on this side I maybe I've built it up too much I can't tell you can just buff it out now for some highlighter I'm very excited for this because this is from Peri Pera this is the pure beam flash highlighter and this is in the shade number one bouncy pink light now i've only used this once before and let me tell you it was an experience it doesn't look like a lot in the pan at all really but let me just grab it. i'm using my finger because i did try it with a brush and i don't feel like it works as well so just 
grab with your finger and go ham. I think it's meant to be like a cream to powder formula. If, in fact, it is a cream to powder formula, but this one is a little bit on the dry side. So just be prepared to like really dig in. And now I'm gonna apply this to my cheek and just watch for the magic to happen. It's like an iridescent glitter and it is so hard to capture on camera. So I feel like now I'm very much looking like a beautiful sparkly dewy dumpling, which is where I really want to be. I'm just going to pop on a little bit of eyeliner and mascara. I don't have a green one, so sorry, it's technically not a full face of green makeup, but I will pop that on and I will be right back. With mascara and liner on, I feel like I have just come alive. I just feel like I look much more like myself. I'm just going to finish off the eyes and I'm going to use this from 3C. This is the limited edition Maison Kitsune one, but they still have this product in their permanent line. And these are the eye switches. This is in the shade Petal. If there's one thing that KBD does well, it is eye glitters, because these are stunning. Yee! Can I just say, even without lashes, that is such a very simple, <laughs> granted, but really pretty eye look. Now for lips. Uh, I have been tossing up what to do for my lip color, but I think I'm gonna use a combination. I'm gonna do a slight variation on the Korean gradient lip trend. I feel like that is like the number one thing where people are like, this is the Korean lip trend. And like, it, it is definitely one of the most iconic Korean beauty trends, but I feel like it, it's a trend. And I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like people have started to move on a little bit. So I'm gonna go with this. Now, I don't know if this technically counts as K-beauty, but this is from Pony Effect. And this is in the shade On Point. This is a liquid lip, but it's a really nice formula. I'm not a huge fan of liquid lips. It's not my favorite, but this looks like the clickbaity like cream lip trend, <laughs> but I'm actually gonna smudge it out. I laid another KBD color on top. This is the Perry Ink Velvet in the shade number 12. And I've really diffused that out, but I kind of like it. Okie dokie, well, I have just looked at the time and it is high time that I be getting off to my holiday party. But let me know what you guys thought of this look. I think it's really pretty and fresh, very youthful, very sparkly. It's definitely not as like OTT as like an actual K-pop look, but I feel like it is very much inspired and you can see the inspiration. Also these contacts I'm loving, like my, I can't like stop looking at them because it just feels really different to me. I know this is just like a quick kind of chatty video, but I do really love playing with makeup and I do want to do more makeup focus content for you guys so if you did enjoy it please press the like button so I know that you enjoyed it and if you would like to see more of my face and me just <laughs> I guess being like a gremlin woman uh don't forget to subscribe to see my next videos as always guys thank you so so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye